Welcome back. We're going to take a look at how to use emitters in the sound engine of Game Maker Studio to do these uh, two or three simple effects. When objects are far away, the sound they make is going to be a little bit quieter. And when objects get closer, the sound gets louder. And also just the idea that objects on the right side of the screen can come out of the right speaker, objects on the left side of the screen, the left speaker. And of course, if you have 3D surround sound, uh, Game Maker Studio will handle that too if set up properly so that the sounds come from all around you. Okay, let's get started on this one. If you haven't seen one of my other videos on sound and emitters, you might want to go peek at that first just so you have a bit of a handle on what an emitter is because I won't go over that too much here. But let's get going. First thing we have to do when you're doing your music and your sound files, you're going to notice that Game Maker Studio has one little box here that's, uh, that tricks a lot of beginners. They forget about this one. It says Target Options, Mono, Stereo, and 3D. Now, you can have stuff like background music being stereo, but when you get the things like your sound effects, like the cannon, or the alarm that our ghost is going to make, you'll see that I've switched it to 3D. If you don't switch it to 3D, what you're going to get is you're going to get all your code that looks like it's going to work for 3D sound positioning, and it's not going to work. So you go through, you switch all your things to 3D that need to be 3D, and that's the first step in getting ready. Now, the next step in getting ready is what you want to do here is the world of your game actually has something called a listener. And the listener is basically like a, like a fake head with ears that listens for sounds. Now, this is actually set up to be quite advanced. So if you were going to make a 3D shooter, as you turn left and right, the sounds will pan. Now, for a lot of you, you're just doing a basic... Uh, you know, top-down, two-dimensional game, you're going to want to actually take your listener and you're going to want to at least set it so it's facing the right way. Now, this is a complicated line I really don't want to explain right now, audio listener orientation. But what you give it is you give it three X, Y, Z pieces of data, which is where our fake head is looking at. So X direction, Y direction, Z direction. And you can see here, I'm basically looking down. Remember that the Y position is positive as you go down the screen. The next three things you give it, X, Y, Z, is actually the sort of the position of the head. Okay, like you could be looking one way, but is my head tilted sideways? Is my head upside down? So what this is saying is basically no X and Y tilt, but I'm fully tilted in the Z direction. And remember, the Z direction goes into the screen, so the top of my head going into the screen. What this line does, without understanding it too much, is it basically puts the head, you know, so it's facing the right way, so left sounds will be on the left, right sounds will be on the right, sounds uh, above us will be above us. So really, it can be just a memorized line from now, or go pop into the Game Maker instruction and read about it. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to skip this line right here. And now that I have my listener orientated, I'm going to tell you that with my player, I have to constantly move the listener. So I'm going to use the step event. And then the step event, every time the player moves, I need to update where my fake head and ears is going to be located, right? Because the idea is that the sound is relative to the player. So what I do is I go audio listener position, X, Y, 0. So wherever my X is, remember I'm coding inside of the player right now, wherever my Y is, and my game is just an XY two-dimensional game, so the Z position here is just zero. Okay, and in a lot of your games, you'll just leave it at zero too. This one right here, don't worry about it, I'll get back to it. And that's really it, okay, for the player. So the two key things, okay, at some point when your game starts, you want to set the orientation of your game's listener. And in the step event, if you want your sounds to be relative to the player, then continually update the position of the listener. Now let's go to playing the sounds. I have this thing called thing here that just constantly screeches out a bad sound. And let's show you what we did in our thing. Since I want this thing to be making a sound at a certain position, this is the perfect use of an emitter. So the first thing I do here is I create an emitter, and I called it 
my emitter so that this ghost thing has its very own emitter I set something called the fall off model now this again is very mathematical and tricky you can look up in game makers uh, documents at the different models and just try them by chance I'll just sort of show you here um, audio do 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 where's the fall off models here I'm looking especially for emitter fall off you can see here that game maker will actually give you a couple there it is a couple descriptions mathematically of how the fall off works but if you're not really good at math this won't make a lot of sense you can just chuck these different names in there and see which one you like the most the one I'm using right now is one called linear distance clamped so basically what it means is if you're twice as far away uh, it's sort of like the sound will be half as much and if I'm three times as far away one third and eventually the sound just uh, you know completely drops off right to zero so you can chuck a few random ones in there now audio emitter fall off well this is where you actually say the numbers using this type of fall off what are the actual numbers going to be I mean if you had a really big room that's 900 wide you may say hey when I get to 900 no sounds or maybe you say the uh, sound source has to be 1800 pixels away from the listener before the sound becomes zero so that's what these numbers here are this emitter that I just made I'm gonna tell it how to produce its sound so you'll see here it's my emitter which is the emitter we just created and I'm gonna say up to a hundred you don't even apply the fall off so zero to a hundred pixels distance from our games listener right that head fake head that we made attached to the player nothing's gonna happen but as soon as you hit a hundred yes it's gonna start doing stuff and it's gonna do stuff up until 500 pixels at 500 pixels away from our listener then there's gonna be no sound at all so basically the effect is gonna last sort of from a hundred to 500 this last number one it's like an exponent factor like if I actually change it to two uh, the effect will drop off faster three even faster so you can just fiddle with numbers there and see how you like it usually you can just leave it at one and it's okay now just a note some of the fall off models you take even though you put a number there like 500 and it says what 500 there will be no more sound past 500 you still do get some sound after 500 so you know you can explore and it's one of those sad things where it's really trial and error and seeing what works and what doesn't okay so that's what that line is now once you have that emitter set up for our thing really all you have to do when we're playing our sounds now is we just play it on that emitter so if you decide to play a sound audio play sound on and just say which emitter and you want to play it on its emitter so you could have it so every object in the game has its own emitter that just follows it and that's a really key point here this emitter when we originally made it in the create event right it just made the emitter and its default location is at zero 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 basically the dead center of the game maker world right what I need to do is you need to constantly update it just like you constantly update the listener to the player position I gotta constantly update this emitter position so it follows this thing so you'll see here I'm gonna take my emitter and move it to my X and my Y position and again Z is zero because I'm not using 3d right just use an X and Y and that's it so what you basically get is well let's give it a run here and you'll see the overall results of this so you'll see here the emitter is always updating to this guy's position so as I move this guy the emitter is moving at the X and Y this number you see here I'm actually just drawing the distance from the thing to the player and remember we had set that fall off at 500 so when I come within 500 you start to hear the sound really quietly I don't I'm not sure if you can hear it but I can hear it and as we get closer it starts to ramp up and I think my value was 200 once I'm inside of 200 or something or 100 the sounds just full and it's unaffected by distance here 
So that's what those two numbers were in the fall off. And you can see this work with whichever person I decide to move. If I move the player in, that's the listener. So the listener is attached to the player. And so the listener is moving now. And same token, right? It's always based on the distance between the listener and the emitter. Right? It's not based on the distance between the objects. You have to remember we're moving the listener and the emitter, you know, in unison. Now, that's the basic idea. It works. Um, once you get used to using it, it's not too hard to use. You do do a lot of this with all your objects. Updating positions, you know, for the sounds that you want to play at certain positions. You obviously have to move the emitters. And whoever's doing the listening, you just have to make sure to also update the position of the listener. Now, one thing that I didn't explain that I said we'll get to it later was... I didn't really explain what this extra line here. I had made another emitter inside of my player, and I called it main emitter. Um, this was just in case you want to play sounds that you want to be full volume for the player. Um, really, you have two options. Here, one option is I've made an emitter called the main emitter, and in the step event, I keep that main emitter always updated at the player position and this way if I play sounds and I decide to play them on an emitter at the main emitter well the main emitter is right at the player they'll just always be full volume okay that's one option you could do so for instance when I press the space bar I play on main emitter sound cannon so basically I'm always playing it on an emitter that is right at the exact same position as the uh, listener so it's full volume. Now the other option there, which is actually a better option, is you could just go audio, play sound. And you know, you could just play the sound. Sound, canon, priority one, loops, false. You could do that. Um, the reason I didn't do that in this example is I just want to show you both because I know a lot of beginners out there will group all their sound effects on certain emitters. And when you play this way, that sort of restricts how you can turn sounds uh, on and off and the volumes of the sounds in the game. So just to show you that if you're not going to go that route, whoops, it's maybe a better route just to do this. Okay, make an emitter that just follows the player and that plays it all at full. And there you go. That's a little bit about emitters. Now there's some other cool stuff you can do that I don't cover in this video, but you can make the emitters uh, simulate speed so you get a Doppler effect. Uh, you can change the pitch of emitters. You can do a lot of neat things, right? But I know a lot of beginners want to know how to do the movement and the left and right sound. There you go. Uh, have fun exploring with all those different fall-off modes uh, that you can use to find the one that's just right for your game. All right, have fun with that. Hopefully that helps uh, explain a little bit about emitters. Thanks for watching.